let me uh, give a brief abstract to the talk rather than start into the uh, sequence of uh, PowerPoint slides. If you look up textbooks on physics, uh, you'll find uh, decay rates of various radioactive elements listed, and you'll be told that uh, these are constants, uh, nothing, nothing changes the decay rate of any of these radioactive elements. Uh, well, uh, um, my colleagues here, Bunshan and uh, etc. at Purdue University, have realized that there's contradictory evidence of this. At least three laboratories who carried out multi-year studies of uh, several elements, radioactive elements, have found annual variations in the decay rates of these elements. Uh, their, they, their first interpretation was that this must be due to the varying distance between uh, the Earth and the Sun, that there's some um, uh, particles or some other effect coming from the Sun that therefore varies with the variation of distance of the Earth and the Sun. And it's at this point that I came into the picture and joined them, and uh, I have uh, concluded that is not uh, the case, that there is something else going on, and that it really is due to uh, a process that either involves neutrinos, solar neutrinos, or is closely related to solar neutrinos. So now I'll try to give you uh, the evidence uh, for that uh, conclusion. Uh, well, this is uh, one of the typical um, radioactive decays that's involved from radium to actinium, uh, giving off an, uh, an electron. This is one of the processes that was involved, I think, by the PTP experiment. Uh, alpha, there are two kinds of decay, mainly the alpha decay, in which a, um, a nucleus will lose two protons, two neutrons, or a beta decay, in which the nucleus loses an, an electron, and there are others as well. Um, and, well, this doesn't matter to us. This is one of the experiments carried at Brookhaven National Laboratory, a very uh, distinguished laboratory. Uh, dealing with uh, radium, and uh, they had silicon as a, uh, a standard. Uh, and this is the uh, paper they published in uh, 1986, uh, in which they give their measurement of the half-life. What they were after was getting a more accurate measurement of the half-life of uh, silicon. But um, they found that the measurements showed a very clear annual variation of a fraction of a percent. And of course, this makes you very worried because you know that the temperature of the laboratory varies between summer and winter. You know that the radon flux uh, varies annually for similar because of temperature variations. And so the, the, the immediate conclusion is that you're, there's contamination in your experiments and that uh, it's not a real variation, it's a, just a, an apparent one due to, due to environmental effects. But they made careful studies and they could not uh, convince themselves that was the case. It was left as an open question that there appears to be an annual variation that they could not explain. And here is a plot of their data and uh, the, the blue points are their measurements, uh, and these are five-point average, and the red curve is uh, an appropriately scaled um, um, representation of the distance, of the Earth-Sun distance. And if you look carefully, you'll notice they're not quite in phase, and that's a very important point, which we'll come back to later on. Another experiment over an even longer time scale, I think almost 20 years, carried out in Germany, um, and they were studying radium, and they found uh, a variation of a fraction of a percent, a similar variation, uh, an annual variation. And uh, here, I mean, it's, a, it's a very impressive curve, uh, showing again the blue points uh, are their data, are their measurements of the, of the decay rates, and the red curve is the Earth-Sun distance. So it looks at first sight as if there really is a correlation between Earth-Sun distance 
and uh, the decay rate, and that led the Purdue scientists to conclude that there's some kind of flux uh, that is affecting the decay rate, uh, but it falls off with distance from the sun. Uh, but if you look carefully uh, at the phase uh, of this annual variation, which is shown in green, and compare that with, a, with the phase of the Earth-Sun distance, which is shown in red, you see they don't quite match. And so uh, this makes one suspect that it's not just the Earth-Sun distance that is uh, influencing this process. And uh, my colleagues at Purdue, therefore, propose there is some uh, scalar field or something emitted from the sun. Well, no, actually, this was, their, this was their model before noticing the phase problem. Uh, now, uh, there have been experiments carried out uh, by a group in uh, Italy on dark matter, and they were looking for evidence of dark matter uh, by the variation of uh, 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 scintillation detector measurements and they, knowing the velocity of Earth with respect to the, uh, the, the galactic background or, or cosmological background, they figured that there should be an uh, a ver annual variation with peaks, I think, sometime in June, June 2. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, they, they found an annual variation uh, and they found that uh, it does indeed peak around that time. So here is a correlation, here's a comparison of the phases. Uh, the PTB, a German experiment, had a maximum of January 31, whereas the Earth-Sun distance uh, has its minimum, giving you a maximum effect from the Sun on January 3. Uh, the latitude effect, the Sun's axis is tilted with respect to the ecliptic and you get the best view of the northern hemisphere of the Sun on March 8. The neutrino flux uh, has been found to vary annually and that peaks around February 2. The WIMPs observed by the weekly, uh, suspected WIMPs observed by the uh, DAMA group peaks around June 2. Now what you see is that the PTP data See, is closest to the neutrino data. And that attracted my attention since so I've been studying solar neutrinos for quite a few years. Uh, so what are the possible explanations, say, of the annual variation? One is that there's environmental effects and experimenters say that, now we've, we've been very careful, we've ruled that out. The other is that due to these weakly interactive massive particles that the Italian group claimed to observe, but the phases don't agree. Neutrinos, the phase is okay, but uh, the mechanism is unknown. And there could be something else, of course, going on. So uh, I decided one needs to do, find something else about this data set to try to see whether it really is due to neutrinos or not. And um, I have found that the neutrino flux is closely correlated with the total light output from the sun called irradiance, which is a very surprising result, a very strong result, and that that has a variation. Uh, it varies with a pure frequency of about 11.1 cycles per year, about 30-something days per year, different from the surface rotation rate. So what I did was to take the irradiance data and compare it with this decay rate data. Uh, using the decay, using the irradiance as a proxy for neutrinos. And I found that there's a, a very strong, this, this is a, a, a correlation measurement. This curve shows the correlation between the decay rates and the irradiance as a function of frequency. And you see there's a very sharp peak at 11.08 cycles per year. Uh, confirming the conjecture that what is affecting the decay rate of these elements is in fact neutrinos. And I did a, a Monte Carlo calculation to see whether this is a chance effect. And I ran 100,000 Monte Carlos and uh, not one of them gave as strong a result as the actual data. So this, this correlation between irradiance 
which is the proxy for neutrinos, and decay rates really is a very, 